These are the words of Igor Sikorsky, designer, builder, and pilot of the world's first practical helicopter. There is still a wide field left for the initiative of an individual man. And therefore, it is my firm conviction, approaching the end of my life and having seen something and having worked myself, that still nothing can replace the free work of free man. That's where the real progress is being started. Once done, it must be expanded. In the process of expansion, of mass production and so forth, why obviously organization and so forth are entering the picture. But still for starting, the man is the greatest thing and element which can do it. And the man, in order to do it and do it right, must have freedom. Freedom of initiative, freedom of work, freedom to start something. That is the personal philosophy of the man who founded the helicopter industry and started the organization that bears his name, the Sikorsky Aircraft Division of United Aircraft Corporation. Once you have taken the impossible into your calculation, he said, its possibilities become practically limitless. His ideas and creativity have not been limited by space and time. His greatest challenge and strongest motivation has been to do the impossible. And from his impossible dreams came the first four-engined airplanes. The flying boats that pioneered intercontinental flight. And most incredible of all, the helicopter. Sikorsky built his first helicopter in 1909 in Russia when he was 20 years old. It wouldn't fly because the engines of the day were not powerful enough. He subsequently pursued a career that led to development of a fleet of four-engine aircraft remarkable for their day in Russia. Following the Russian Revolution, he migrated to the United States and overcame great hardship and underwent great personal deprivation to launch a new successful career with his flying boats. Once again, these were aircraft that were far superior to other machines of the same type at that time. He never forgot his first love, and when the pioneering with the flying boats came to an end, he returned to development of a helicopter in the late 1930s. Helicopter was at that time uh, one of the impossibles still. Many people considered that no helicopter with good, real control characteristics could and would ever be constructed. Other pessimists said that even if you will construct a helicopter, no one would need this helicopter. I remember a good friend of mine and a very prominent designer, uh, scientist in aviation asked, when would the helicopter go faster than the airplane? Do you know that? I said, yes, I know. The answer is never. When would the helicopter be more efficient than the airplane? Do you know that? I also said, yes, I know that, never. But I said that helicopter will do a number of jobs which no airplane will do, and which, in fact, nothing else will do except a helicopter. Consequently, that was the idea. While I resume it thinking actively about the helicopter. On September 14, 1939, Sikorsky made the first flight with his helicopter. Before that day, there was no helicopter industry. After it, there was. The first machine was highly experimental and underwent many improvements and refinements before it was placed into production. This strange new bird quickly proved, though, that it could indeed do things no other craft could do. The first uses was to rescue Allied airmen downed behind enemy lines in World War II. The rescue work of the helicopter in both war and peace has become legendary by now. Thousands of men in the armed forces owe their lives to the helicopters, which rescued them after their fighter planes and bombers were shot down in enemy territory. Thousands of civilians have been saved from raging floodwaters following massive hurricanes. 
Untold thousands more have been nourished with the food and treated with the medicine brought in following a natural disaster. More often than not, there was no other way to get these supplies to the stricken people in time to do any good. The life-saving capability of the helicopter was one of the biggest attractions to the machine for its inventor. The vertical lift aircraft could be outstandingly valuable and successful for saving life. That was one of my dreams. I wanted to do that as long as I'm alive. Even if it's the last big job which I did in my life, which perhaps it will be. I think it was besides other things. It had to me a sort of a romantic or philosophical appeal. The appeal is this. What kind of a gadget or machine or vehicle or so forth can give you unlimited freedom of transportation? Well, when you walk, you need a trail or something. A pack animal needs even a better trail. A wagon, horse wagon, needs a still better, no longer trail, it must be road. Automobile needs still better road. Railroad needs a very good track. Steamship needs a long, uh, sufficiently deep waterway from beginning to the point of arrival. Point, that's all. Airplane can fly anywhere, but airplane needed big airport. If there is no airport, no flying field, the airplane is obviously helpless and powerless, completely. If a man is in need, sinking, something like that, well, the airplane can come in and throw some flowers on him. And that's just about all. A uh, direct lift aircraft could come in and save his life. Direct lift aircraft can go anywhere, anytime where there is air. And this commodity is fairly widespread over our wonderful globe. Even if the helicopter cannot land, and these were the ideas which I had fully before I started it, helicopter can use the hoist, in other words, or cable, and can contact any place on the ground, on a roof, on water, on a treetop, absolutely any place. Helicopter is the only thing which can do that. Now, that were the ideas and dreams why I wanted to start a helicopter and why I succeeded finally to sell the management of United Aircraft the idea to authorize its construction. Now, once I received the OK, I promptly started to work without asking any further instruction. It was a small work, most interesting chance to live one's life again, to build something without knowing how to build it. The jobs that helicopters can do seem limited only by the imagination. Sikorsky Aircraft produces helicopters that fly higher, faster, and can carry more payload than any others in America. This is the Black Hawk, which holds the helicopter world speed record of 220.8 miles an hour. The Sky Crane, which holds a series of world altitude records. The CH-53D, which can carry 38 battle-ready troops or a payload of 13,000 pounds. In emergencies and in tests, it's carried far greater loads, up to 25,000 pounds. Here are some highlights of the activities in which helicopters are engaged. Since 1958, Sikorsky helicopters have been used to carry U.S. presidents. S-61s are used to transport passengers and supplies over the frozen, roadless wastes of Greenland. The concrete canyons of Manhattan, with their tremendous traffic problems, are bypassed with a flight from one airport to another in a New York Airways S-61. Another S-61 flies men and supplies to and from an offshore oil rig. An S-58T constructs a power line across the Canadian Rockies. A sky crane offloads ships in the Canadian Arctic, bringing annual supplies to Eskimo villages.
A sky crane lifts a prefabricated house in an experimental demonstration to prove its potential in urban renewal and other home construction. The same type of aircraft builds a dike in Holland. in Delaware. An oil rig in South America. Recently, with the concern about ecology, the helicopter has proven its worth anew particularly in the logging industry. A helicopter can lift out logs that are ready for harvesting without damaging the surrounding growth. Here, a U.S. Navy helicopter picks up U.S. astronauts upon their return from the moon. All U.S. astronauts recovered by this method have been picked up by Sikorsky helicopters. A Coast Guard helicopter rescues a man whose boat caught fire at sea. These are only a few of the thousands of uses for helicopters. And as technology advances and the capabilities and performance of the helicopter increases, these uses increase multifold. The lifeblood of the helicopter industry is research and development. Massive continuing programs are underway at Sikorsky to create better machines. A recent example is the development of the elastomeric rotor head. This rotor head requires no lubrication and greatly reduces the number of parts in the rotor system. It has successfully undergone flight tests and promises to greatly improve the performance and lower the maintenance costs of helicopters. And here's a brand new helicopter in the making that employs the company's ABC, or Advancing Blade Concept, rotor system. The ABC system consists of two coaxial, counter-rotating, rigid rotors. It takes advantage of the blade's aerodynamic lift on the advancing side of each rotor disc. Full lift capability of the advancing blade is achieved without penalties imposed by the retreating blade. The system offers dramatic increases in speed and greatly improved maneuverability. It will also provide increased reliability and lower maintenance costs. This is a mock-up of Sikorsky's entry in the competition to develop a new utility squad-carrying helicopter for the U.S. Army. The big challenge in this case is to produce a machine which will be low risk and low costs but which still will contain all the available technological advances and will vastly outperform current hardware. On the horizon is an aircraft that will be the first true intercity VTOL. Utilizing an aircraft borrowed from the Marine Corps, the company demonstrated the feasibility of this program in the Northeast Corridor. A series of flights were made from several city centers to other city centers, including New York, Washington, and Boston. In each case, new world records were established for downtown to downtown travel. The helicopter, needing little space in which to land, is very favorable to the environment. Since it takes off and lands vertically, its noise profile is very low. Additionally, the Sikorsky rotor system is inherently low in noise, and the company has conducted much research to reduce it even further. Sikorsky engineers believe that the short-haul intercity VTOL can help alleviate growing pressures on existing airports without creating new environmental problems. This is a sampling of the philosophy and activity at Sikorsky Aircraft. There are many additional programs, programs being moved forward by the individual initiative of creative engineers and scientists. Here is Igor Sikorsky's answer to a question put to him recently as to whether individuality still plays a role in technological development or whether everything is teamwork today. Certainly, the question of a teamwork entered now to a greater extent than it entered before. 
And this is both in science and perhaps in every other branch of technique. Nevertheless, I am convinced that the work of the individual still remains a very important factor, still remains a spark which moves mankind ahead even more than teamwork. Teamwork comes into existence after the spark, the intuitive spark of a living man started something. Then later comes the teamwork to give a bigger body to the little soul which he created. So briefly, to my mind, creative work is still there with us, still there to stay, and still remain a tremendously important factor in the progress of mankind. It is that philosophy which continues to move Sikorsky aircraft forward and strengthens its traditional position as the leader in the field of vertical lift technology. It is the philosophy that will help the helicopter meet the future demands for vertical lift machines of even greater dependability and economy as helicopters continue to expand the many tasks they now perform. It has become increasingly clear that future aircraft will cover a spectrum of three major groups, each with its specialized exclusive capabilities. First, the middle speed range as seen in the airliners of today. Second, supersonic aircraft at the higher end of the spectrum. Finally, at the lower speed end, the new helicopters and other VTOLs, which will prove the best means of serving the shorter distance transport requirements, both commercial and military. It is in this third area that tomorrow's engineers may well find their greatest challenge and opportunity.